I am George Joseph. I started my research career at the Tata Institute of Fundamental Research in Mumbai. And uh, I have been working on carrying instruments with balloons to study cosmic radiation. And uh, in 1973, I came to Ahmedabad, joined the Space Application Center. I will, before I get into the detail, I would like to give some background how Space Application Center started during the unfortunate death of Sarabhai. During those days, activities in the uh, in Ahmedabad were scattered in different places. After when Professor Dhawan took over as chairman, he consolidated everything and put together as a space application center. Now, those days there are two major activities, one relating the communications, other relating to the remote sensing. But the remote sensing activities were initially in those days were carried out under the leadership of Professor B. R. Pisharadi at the Physical Research Laboratory PRL, which is uh, initiated by Vikram Sarabhai. Now, this was shifted to Space Application Center in those days. And communications activities were a little more in advanced stage. But uh, uh, remote sensing was in the infant stage. So when uh, Professor Eshpal took over, he found it is necessary to have all facets of remote sensing under one roof, which is a unique concept which you won't find anywhere else. Now, for example, you require a, a camera to develop a camera or an instrument to collect the data from the aircraft or the spacecraft. Then this data has to be converted into computer compatible tapes or the photographic product for analysis. And then this data has to be actually utilized by the end user. That's what the real purpose is concerned. So, Professor Eshpal decided to bring in people to head these three activities. It so happened that all these three people came from TIFR. Now, I was uh, looked, I was uh, invited to develop the instrumentation, basically Earth Observation Cameras. Mr. D.S. Kamath was a computer expert and he was the person who developed the first computer in TIFR to develop data processing and product. And Dr. Baldev Sahai, who will uh, look after the applications. So just a little bit digress a story. So I was working with Professor Yashpal on a program which is called uh, Infrared Astronomy. So one afternoon he called me and said, uh, then I thought he is going to discuss something about the experiment. So I took all my files, notes, etc. came to him and he listened to everything. To my surprise, he said, George, I want you to come to Ahmedabad. So, so what I will do, sir, I said, no, no, you will do work on remote sensing to develop the instrumentation. Well, at those times, to be honest, I didn't know much about remote sensing except it's meant for weather and my knowledge of easterly and westerly is rather poor. So he said that you come and talk to Professor Pisharadi. And so one fine morning I got a, a ticket to come to Ahmedabad. So I came and uh, had a discussion with Professor Pisharadi who explained me in such a cap possibilities. So it appears, you know, if you want to do anything, it has to be remote sensing. So that's how I was inducted. But then I had a little problem leaving TIFR because I was deeply involved in developing the payload for the Aryabhata satellite, which was my uh, thesis uh, instrumentation. But uh, then my boss there was worrying how this will be completed. And anyway, one fine morning, I got an appointment order so I started in, I landed in, uh, in Ahmedabad. Now, 
why this is uh, professor eshpal's concept of all the three facets coming together under one roof was very effective we will find in the later my talk now this is a unique thing because if you want something to happen uh, something productive to the end user you should have all the facets of that now he had such a foresight he said it's not enough that you develop this technology in house you should know what the user wants and user should know what technology can be provided so he has developed he has instituted what is a small called user cell which later arup dasgupta was heading that probably so this is a concept which is originated right from the beginning in all the space activities that space is not for uh, developing in house things but the fruits have to go to the national development this is how the space application center evolved as far as the remote sensing activities are concerned now uh, let me digress little bit and talk about remote sensing origin at a national level I think in 1969 professor uh, sarabai had uh, wanted to have a meeting with then prime minister uh, indira gandhi so he got an appointment of 3rd march 1969 and he went there with a group of people to present what remote or the what space can do in general and remote sensing in particular so he got half an hour but the discussion went for hours and uh, the discussion was over and they came back to prl professor prashardi was the main person explaining all these things so professor prashardi next day was little concerned and worried went to professor uh, uh, sarabai and said sir we talked about so much in detail to madam to prime minister that what we can do but she never said that you go ahead sarabai's answer was she never said don't do it so it is an acceptance you go ahead with the work this is the typical way in which sarabai used to i mean to get things done in the front and bridging the gap between the uh, administration administrative requirement and the scientists so then uh, the one of the participant in that meeting was ms swaminathan who was in charge of icr agriculture research so he came and talked to professor sharde let us find out how this is effective in our condition so what he suggested is in kerala there is a coconut trees i've got a disease called coconut wilt which affects the the top portion of the coconut and you can't see it unless it is progress by the time the damage has already done on that so that was the first experiment carried out in the remote sensing and it was done on a helicopter so then they could clearly identify using uh, multi band uh, cameras they could identify the uh, coconut wilt trees but then they found out it is rather difficult to operationalize because each individual tree is getting affected on to this thing but professor prashardi in the later vein you know those days we didn't have any equipment so we had to get the camera from one place expert from another place developing from another place so so sarabai in his uh, in his later sense he used to tell because i want narrate this will be interesting so he used to make a comment that the true this of a true international character of the first remote sensing experiment by india the camera was swiss made the film was made from uk the helicopter was from russian an expert from usa helped 
but the brain behind the experiment was indian of course coconut tree was also indian so this is the beginning you could say the first experiment which has come on that <coughs> then the following that the lot of uh, uh, joint experiment were done with users to find out how effectively remote sensing can be applied for national development so the the thrust in all these things were don't do things by isro but you have to get involved in the users on the things now coming back to the developmental effort of cameras which i was deeply involved in the so when we when uh, initially there was only a single band thermal camera which professor pisha sarabai got from uh, france because of his special contact which was used to measure the sea surface temperature those days uh, you know that was a very important thing to find out the temperature of the ocean which it can be linked to the monsoon <clears throat> so when uh, i came uh, to space application center the first task given was to develop the capability of making uh, earth observation systems on that we started with developing a airborne Uh, multispectral scanner as it is called it was a four band camera which is similar to multispectral scanner flown in the uh, in, by the us in the satellite on that this was extensively used to collect data and this data was given to the computer people to convert into data pro- products and then to the uh, the application people to analyze it on that <coughs> now this was done uh, in a very systematic way uh, we have taken imagery in number of places initially before the development of the multispectral scanner on the airborne we used uh, uh, cameras using the film of course that that is now outdated now nobody uses that now then what happened we have come to a situation where the aryabhatta was launched when the aryabhatta was launched uh, then the after the launch then uh, the even before the launch i would say professor you are rao and professor davan was wondering how we will proceed further with the satellites so they decided we should have an application satellite but then we have to minimally use i um, will maximally use the uh, what is available as a standby for aryabhatta and therefore it was aryabhatta was a low earth orbiting satellite as a spinning satellite we thought it is the best thing is to use here yeah, uh, for remote sensing so it was decided the next satellite of the india was a remote sensing satellite and it apparently it seems that two days uh, after the launch of the first satellite there was a mou signed between the india and the uh, us uh, ussr space agency to launch the uh, the second satellite on to this thing so this satellite had a camera system which is developed by the space application center which was a spinning satellite so it is very difficult you can imagine you take a photograph on a moving system how difficult it is but then we made the two band camera system i would say this was much more complicated than the later uh, cameras which we have developed and this had a very high voltage it's about 14 kilovolts which has to be taken care of without any problem under vacuum etc etc so when the satellite was launched one of the uh, the first time the camera could not be operated because of the arc but we did a simulation experiment we immediately found out what the problem is and after few months it successfully operated on that so that was the first space borne system what we have developed 
In the meantime, we were looking ahead of what are the technologies. The conventional technology was using a, what is a, called an optomechanical scanner, where a mirror scans the surface of the earth, and the spacecraft movement gives you successive scan lines on that. Then uh, a, a committee was set up to define what should be the next operational satellites. So the committee at that time looked at many things and we said that we'll go by the known technology at that time that is using an optomechanical scanner and the first uh, office order by chairman was to use optomechanical scanner as one of the payloads. And considering the, uh, our experience using a, a solid state devices, that also was included. But then by the time we have demonstrated what is called a charge coupled device, which could be used for imaging. I would sell uh, the first airborne system by Germany was in 1978 or so. And we demonstrated its potential in 1980. In those days when internet was not there, information percolation was very slow. I would say this high technology, we were concurrent with the rest of the world, which I consider is a, is a great uh, you know, contribution and achievements. So we, I did a detailed study and our uh, team using this uh, uh, CCD cam uh, devices and we made a submit a proposal. I uh, made a letter to then director uh, ISRO Satellite Center that it, if you want to go further, we should concentrate our effort on using a solid state view, you're having a CCD. A committee was set up and I could convince the committee and therefore it was decided to have a CCD based system in the first operational camera. That is uh, one of the great uh, step forward because normally in the space one is scared to take any new devices. You go by the, you know, already experienced uh, methods by which one goes on this thing. We have the IRS-1A launch with the, uh, what we call the LIST camera linear image self-scanning camera, which uh, there were two cameras, one with about 70 meter resolution, which was like Landsat MSS, another with about 35 meter resolution, which is close to T, uh, th uh, TM, uh, uh, sensor or camera on board a Landsat. So the idea is the people who are using Landsat data now can use very close to this and find out what is its potential on this thing. So this was, uh, the, uh, the quality of the image was excellent because the CCD camera has got a specific advantage which the optomechanical scanner did have. So it has the per outsmart the performance of the Landsat MSS. And therefore, in 1995, when we launched IRS-1C, it is the highest spatial resolution 5 meter camera in the world. So that is, uh, you know, till then, uh, the, the highest spatial resolution was the French camera in the spot for 10 meter. Let me digress and tell how this all came about, this high resolution camera. So Professor Rao was taking a review that what is the next step forward after IRS 1A and 1B. So uh, we said that there is a need to go for a middle infrared and explained how it is the thing. And he asked what about the panchromatic camera? Uh, that is panchromatic means in black and white with the spot at with 10 meters. Somebody from the uh, group said, said we should go for a 10 meter camera in panchromatic. So I was very upset. I don't want you to be followers. Don't tell me you can do what others can do it. Can you do better? So he looked at me and said, George, can you make five meter? It was a big challenge. <laughs> there was no 
there are no known systems but we took up the challenge and the story i am telling is once a challenge is given to a team who are dedicated they can come up rise to, uh, rise to the occasion and provide it in 1995 we made the first high resolution civilian system anywhere in the world now i just want to digress and tell the ashpals thinking of having all facets in one place now you know we have been talking about what are the new development of the sensors to be done on that so at that time we used to interact with the application people is one of the and one of the major applications of remote sensing in india at those days and even now is considered is finding out crop production estimation area and production estimation now to find out the area is relatively simple production you should know how much quintal per hectare you can get you require the remote sensing observation during the growth cycle you know in the the whole of the any of this uh, crops it uh, goes up to a maturity and then senescence takes place on that you need to make observation in all these all stages five six times at least in a span of this now the issue is in a country like india is cloud cover and the remote sensing what we have been using is optical and it cannot penetrate through the cloud so what you have to do you should be able to make repeat observation but when you may want to make a repeat observation there are certain constraints you require a very large swath or a width of the things which those days because of the technological limitation is going to be difficult but we found with this uh, our uh, application scientists even with coarse resolution of about 70 80 meters but if you can repeatedly see every 5 days it's going to be great so we developed a wide field camera which has an uh, later it is called the advanced wide field camera of abips which has got about 70 80 meter spatial resolution but about uh, 700 i don't know 700 km swath this is what happened when the satellite moves in one because of the large swath we can see the adjacent place so every few five to six days you should be able to cover this this turned out to be a very unique sensor it was not available anywhere in the world so even uh, the outside uh, india us and euro people started using it and there are number of publications one can see using this uh, this system so this is another innovations which we have done to meet the application needs the point i want to make is our idea is not to make the best instrument our our idea is our concept is what is the best instrument to meet our application needs it may be incidentally may also become the best instrument on to these things and later on uh, as far as the development of the sensors are concerned one of the important application is height measurement so for that you require a stereoscopic viewing that means you are able to see a third dimension using two eyes so you require two cameras or use one camera itself from different angle so we decided to go with a two by uh, two camera system with a 2.5 meter resolution of say cartographic thing that's also first of its kind using a uh, regular stereo that means two independent viewing at different angles on that so that was uh, also used in number of uh, countries other than the uh, india now with the irs one launch now we have found out that our data has a utility outside india so there were number of ground stations set up so that this data is been collected and can be utilized by other countries also now 
this was done under those days but what is called an antrix corporation which probably you would have heard from hegde and they distributed this and they, we set up all the ground stations and the software required for that and for collecting on to this thing now <clears throat> from then onwards we have uh, now currently have sensors which capable of sub meter capability which uh, i think around in go to 0.25 meters or so with 25 centimeters of those things which has got a tremendous potential in urban planning and of course the other strategic applications on that so if i would say that india started with a very modest system of 1 km now at par with the rest of the world in providing a data uh, of the imagery to the uh, to the world if somebody wanted on to it but i would uh, also correct and say currently these type of systems are now commercially available the because of the strategic importance so the large number of con- uh, private uh, companies are developing this but our is specifically for our own uh, you know meeting our own requirement on this thing another uh, uh, area we saw as plunge is planetary exploration see the that is a brainchild of then chairman dr kasturi rankin he said that we should find out our ability to go to other planets so the first step was going to moon now the people will some people will question why you know a country like us to go to moon but i would like to say any technological development the fruits you will see very much later and the space, uh, the moon is going to be a resources both on economical and statistical uh, and from the okay ah uh, economical as well as strategic wait if sorry for this strategic uh, reasons on that so you cannot be lagging behind so once you so therefore there was the first step towards going to a other planets and having our own food put it in on there so the committee was set up to uh, to uh, to define what type of systems can be there in our first uh, satellite uh, around the moon <clears throat> i had the privilege of chairing that committee study team and we come out with a set of instruments these instruments were to make scientific observations as well as the image <clears throat> so at that time i talked to the chairman isro said this uh, let's make it uh, in a science mission so we will can go call for international participation which normally happens in nasa and esa etc they invite international participation and this is a best good proposal they will allow some space to for that so we made a announcement of opportunity there's a number of uh, proposals and we have shortlisted and these were put in the satellite on the vc so what i want to say is whenever we made a scientific exploration of the moon so we at par with the rest of the countries invited proposals to put it on that and that has become a an international mission if you want to say though even the whole satellite and every aspect is always on that things that time itself we have the study team looked into our possibility of going to mars because it was not to stop with that going to mars and one of the experiment there was a imaging camera see a stereoscopic camera on that <coughs> so that the systematic uh, mapping of the moon can be done the moon has been mapped in centimeter level by astronauts landing on that 
and a very coarse level but never taken a systematic uh, total coverage of the moon on that thing this is the first effort in that direction why that is important is if you want to do any development you should know you should have a base map you know in india if you want any development you go for survey of india to have the base map that was the purpose but the satellite unfortunately it didn't last for a year which we have designed but still most of the areas have been covered on that thing so we have now capability not only cover india uh cover the earth but other planets and later we have this camera system and other things on to a moon uh, to the mars mission where they have been using systematic measure, measurement of the imaging of the mars on to this this is what broadly the uh, the sensor development on to this thing but i should say that uh, the the isros effort does not stop by generating imagery and in fact as sarabai uh, professor sarabai put it in how we can use it for national development so one of the major thrust right during sarabai's time was to involve the user agencies those time sarabai himself professor sarabai himself wrote to a large number of administrators to make them know what the space can do so there was a meeting held in uh, delhi there were 100 administrators policy makers were there which during those days were a very good number and saraba himself addressed to him and so that culture using take your uh, end user along with you is continued the successive chairpersons on that now the uh, as i mentioned earlier the first experiment which is called uh, the how to find out the acreage and production was done with agriculture research institute and later before a launch of a satellite there was a utilization program so we have baskara utilization program where you involve the actual end users you make a simulated data and tell them how you can use it on this thing similarly you have irs utilization program before the launch of irs and when we had the uh, the ocean satellite we not only had a utilization program we had mou signed with the seven uh, research institutions and operational agencies that how you will use the uh the the ocean data for the end applications on that now i would say that with this type of effort now we were able to transfer the technology to the end users now for to give one or two or three examples the uh, forest department they have a mandate to find out extent of forest for every uh, few years now uh, they were using black and white photographs of that by aerial survey assembly now we have demonstrated using uh, satellite imagery how you can uh, enumerate the forest cover the whole of the country now the forest survey of india they carry out this independently the technology was developed along with them of course initially there were some uh, you know uh, discrepancies this has been scientific and technically we have been solved on that the other major uh, area in which isro has uh, developed is the production of various uh, agricultural products before the launch before the harvest this has got a tremendous economic value that means if one finds out your production is less okay you can take advanced planning to import or take any other necessary action but if the world knows that your production is less they will jack up the price 
So this is a very important thing. Now this technology has been transferred under the NAE's uh, Department of Agriculture, which is called uh, uh, a unit MNCF. I don't remember the food form, and uh, they now generate the production of wheat, rice, and a few other uh, cereals and uh, cash crops much in advance, at least three weeks in advance of the harvesting of this thing. This is one thing you can say where the actual activity has gone to the end user on that. Other area is the potential school for fishing. <coughs> This is also developed at the Swiss Application Center. <coughs> See, what happened normally, the fishermen take the boat and go out with the past experience to find out. We have found out the fish accumulation take place where there is a gradient of phytoplankton and there is a temperature gradient. This can be found out using satellite imagery. Therefore, we can find, tell them where is the potential school fish. So you can go them and fish instead of looking around on the thing. Now this is an operational system. National Institute of Oceanography in Hyderabad, they are the prime agency collecting data and, and uh, distributing it all coastal areas. Now they have a board in which it shows that which is the longitude and latitude you can go and fish the things. So they move around with the GPS which now even the mobile has got and go there and catch the fish. Now this has a tremendous economic potential and in fact the point is that even if it is delay, you know, not available, they will just say where is the data on that. Now this is also transmitted uh, by using radio on their own languages. On this. So I thought these are a couple of examples which you can show that the remote sensing technology has gone into the grassroot applications of that thing. So this is uh, thought what uh, I could talk about. As I said that uh, the first uh, camera system for the Bhaskara was, uh, you know, you have a, we have a peculiar sit, uh, requirement. We have to look at two spectral bands or two colors. One is in the visible, other in the near infrared, which is not visible to human eye on that. So you do not get this type of cameras easily on that. So we have asked a company in uh, France to design one for us and that they did it very well. Probably this is the first time similar such type of cameras used for earth observation cameras on that. When we come back to actual operational system, one uh, gratifying thing is with time we were able to indigenize all these things. Now initially the our idea you know all of ISRO is don't develop everything and spend time. Wherever you have the design, try to get it from outside if po wherever possible and indigenously developed. So the lenses for the CCD camera, which has a new design concept compared to the s things. That means they used to have a one big camera, a telescope and split the beam into four or five colors. We use four separate cameras, lenses. Just the advantage, each can be tuned specifically to their capability. So the quality is much higher on that. Now we have indigenous capability of developing these cameras and also aspheric mirrors. These are all done by Leos in, uh, uh, in the uh, Bangalore. And even now CCDs, we have the ability to develop on that thing. So we have not only have an indigenous design capability, which I would say is par with best in the world. We also have a capability to the component level to fabricate 
and make it onto the screen. And along with that, uh, another very important thing is characterizing. See, testing these things is very, very important because you have to see that it meets the end specifications on that. So we have developed an elaborate laboratory capability here, which has, I would say, can be compared to the best in the world. It's a very large integration facility and a complicated or complex instrument to test. See, if you want to test a camera, the test instrument has to be better than the camera. So you have to really make test instrument of at least one order of magnitude better than the camera to test it. These are some of the other achievements which we have done on that. Thing. I would say currently we are at par with anywhere else in the world to system design and fabricate these uh, cameras, design and realize this camera. I would also mention, digress one point which I have not mentioned earlier. See, we realize the potential of microwave. See, the visible has got a limitation that it cannot see through clouds. It cannot see at night. Microwave instrumentation see through day and night. So this microwave technology is very complex. But we knew this potential. So even in the Bhaskara satellite, we had a microwave radiometer, which essentially measured the radiance coming from the earth in two bands. And this has been used to find out the atmospheric phenomena. Yes, the, so parallelly, we were developing, which is called a side-looking airborne radar. <coughs> and for the aircraft, so that which give you the familiarity. So, you know, all ISRO programs, what we have is you uh, have do it in a, a learning phase, then uh, do it in a, a in experimental phase, then operationalize it. So, the three stage one we go, learn, experiment and operationalize. <coughs> then, you know, the side looking airborne radar has a problem, we cannot get a very high spatial resolution. So, <coughs> So what people do is a synthetic aperture radar. Now India has the capability of building in synthetic aperture radar with a very complex uh, uh, instrumentation. And we had the first uh, satellite launched using uh, which has a capability, different modes it can operate, different uh, uh, ways of uh, polarization can operate. So that is another day and night technology. So that also ISRO has mastered on that. And that from the application point of view, as I told you, you have the issue with the cloud cover. So that will not happen onto these things. So that is another area which you can do it. So I think that is it. Uh, probably what I told right now can be interjected along with the sensor thing. So that may look a little more continuous on that. Let me conclude by reiterating what Homi Baba said in 1962. We are in the same ground floor as the Western nations. They are leading us only by about four to five years, referring to launch of Sputnik. Uh, uh, hence, in the course of 10 to 20 years, we must be able to equal them. Well, in the field of remote sensing, I could confidently say we have not only equaled them in applying the remote sensing technology for national need, we may, I would say, even may have excelled them. Thank you.